Hi, this is Ann Kennedy from SES London, and I'm standing here with Amanda Davies and Kara McKenna, who just presented a wonderful panel. It was standing room only on developing great content. So how do you cover all of that in a short interview? I have no idea. But Amanda, let's start with you, because you took the strategic approach of how to begin to think about developing great content. You want to name your top three areas? Yeah, so um, we talked about uh, what it what makes great content as opposed to the swathes and swathes of uh, content that are out there on the web, um, how you go about planning great content, um, how you can measure great content. Um, we talked about the importance of using um, search as a, a data set to inform um, the ideas around content to make content relevant. Um, and we talked about um, how you can, um, oh, what else did we talk about? Keywords, keywords, keywords. Yeah, it's all about keywords, all about relevance um, and using um, search essentially to uh, as a springboard for ideas for developing great content. Oh, and multi-format content as well. It's not just about text content. Are we seeing universal search now in the UK? Um, are you referring back to me saying not seeing it in 2009? Yes, we are, absolutely. Um, all of those blended results are coming in, and they're coming in at fantastic speeds of three seconds when we're seeing those tweeted results coming in. Um, turnaround of under an hour when you're seeing most recent news certainly coming in from news sites as opposed to the things that are being pulled in straight from, from tweets, etc. So we now we need to pay attention to multiple forms of content, such as? Uh, such as your blogs, your tweets, your Facebook, um, your news feeds that are coming in from your site, uh, videos. Um, I haven't seen the latest stats on videos. The last one I looked at showed that video had 78% greater chance of getting that click-through rate. I don't know uh, if it's still the same, if you're seeing a lot of users actually going straight to the second biggest search engine, YouTube, um, or if they're inclined to click on those video results ahead of something um, like a news feed that could be more relevant, more determined at this stage. Still, 78% is something not to be sneezed at. Now, all of that is very fresh, no? So what is the most important element now with your content? Um, QDF, query defines freshness. So ensuring that where applicable, you're keeping that content fresh and the fresh content that's going up on your site is in fact optimized in the same way as any other content should be optimized. So how does one find the query that's defining the freshness? Is it in the searches? Is it in Google Instant? Is it in the analytics? Where do we look? Um, I think still using keyword research once you've determined it, but you've got to be looking online yourself and seeing what users are typing in, looking at analytics. Um, if it's within your industry, your analytics should be indicating it. But I think keeping an eye online within your own industry, what's interesting people and knowing what's going to happen by watching streaming pieces uh, online is, is a good indicator and a good place to start. Do you think, either of you, that the uh, Google Instant, the auto-suggest, has had any effect on content? Um, well, yes, in two ways. It's had an, um, an effect on how we consume content, definitely. So, you know, you could argue that it's uh, narrowing people's search behavior, that they're only looking at a smaller and smaller set of uh, search results. Um, but obviously what Google's trying to do is, is to get to deliver the most relevant set of results. So I think from a search behavior perspective, it's definitely having an impact. You spoke, Kara, at the end of the session a little bit about creativity and how to generate it, um, or how to, how to encourage it, if we say, foster it. Do you want to repeat that for us, please? In terms of working with our teams in-house, um, yeah, what we do is we initially identify the terms that we do want to target, but then we think about how can we expand around those terms. Uh, I didn't quite have time to show the videos there, but I think my favorite one last year, and it's not just because of a very handsome man at it, was the Old Spice piece. Um, it's a brand that had nearly died in public awareness terms of view. And suddenly it comes up as one of the top 10 campaigns of last year. And it was all about creativity. Um, 
in this market, it was as popular as in any other markets. And yet, I think for the most part, we were unaware that the main chap within the ad was actually a very famous American football player. So it was about making something very amusing, very engaging, and providing something back there to the audience that is lightly around the brand. So it's sitting down with the more creative people because I'm not one of those within my team, but telling them what we need, what words we need to build on, and getting the ideas around those words. Sorry, I, I was going to say I, I agree um, with Cara. I think one of the biggest challenges for us as, a, as an industry of search marketeers is to is to know and to empower ourselves through the data sets that we have, through the skills that we have to be creative. Um, you know, Cara says she doesn't think she's particularly creative, but she is um, and what we need to do is, is kind of take ourselves out of the data that we're drowning in take two steps back and think out of the box and, and really try and um, extract the nuggets um, that will uh, give us those great ideas for great content so content is still king do we agree on that absolutely or queen yeah, yeah. <laughs> our session all yeah. ladies all girls yeah. all about the yeah well thank you very much it's been great to talk to you and thank you for a great session uh, this is Ian Kennedy at SES London saying cheerio